Hello, we're student nurses from UConn's Accelerated Nursing Program. We're graduating one month from now in December, and for the last month you may have seen us here at the Windsor Senior Center, either delivering meals or doing yoga with you guys. And right now we're doing our service learning project, and our goal for this is to educate the senior, the senior elderly population and Windsor community as a whole on illnesses that affect our community. My name is Max. I'm Cody. I'm Marissa. I'm Tasia. I'm Fonta. Okay, so we're going to get started with our presentation. Alright. So our presentation topic is the flu versus COVID-19. Okay, so again, flu versus COVID-19, the difference in symptoms, I know that they're diseases that are very similar and often confused, so we're going to go through the differences between each one. So what are they? So what is it? Influenza, so the flu, is one of the most common, common infectious diseases each year. So it's a seasonal disease that will affect people most often in the fall and winter. And it has a very variable degree of um, symptoms. So you might get the flu, not know it, or you might get the flu and be very ill. Coronavirus 2019, or COVID-19, is a disease caused by a new strain of coronavirus, which is called SARS-CoV-2. It has symptoms that are very similar to the common cold, or it can be extremely acute, and it may lead to hospitalization, especially in vulnerable groups, such as the elderly. Um, so, the underlying pathophysiology between both diseases are that the influenza or flu viruses are enveloped negative sense single stranded RNA viruses of the family Orthomyxoviridae. And so the coronavirus is a common is common in many different species of animals, including bats, camels, cats, and cattle. So it's considered zoonotic at this point. So the different causes. Influenza results from the infection of one of three basic uh, basic types of influenza viruses. So it's either A, B, or C. And it can be caused, the infection can be caused by direct contact with somebody else infected, unhygienic food preparation, aerosol transmission, so somebody coughing or sneezing in someone else's face, or contact with contaminated objects. So it could live on a surface and say that you touch a door handle that someone else has touched that has the flu. They may have coughed into their hands or sneezed into their hands. So coronaviruses are named for the crown-like spikes on their surface. So coronavirus is the shape of this certain virus. All right, so the clinical manifestations of each disease, so they present somewhat similarly, but they do have some differences. The influenza um, manifestations will vary. However, it does include some common symptoms, such as fever, myalgia, sore throat, diarrhea or vomiting, so nausea and vomiting, cough, weakness, runny nose, and headaches. Just an overall feeling of feeling really, really not happy. So COVID-19 infections have a huge range of the symptoms that you may experience. Some of the common symptoms, however, are shortness of breath, fever, a dry cough, diarrhea, um, fatigue or tiredness, a sore throat, a runny nose, and they found that you may lose your sense of taste and smell, and it might not come back um, right after the infection is over. So how do you prevent the flu or COVID-19? This has been a really big topic that I feel like we've all been talking about a lot lately, and the number one way is to have good hand hygiene. So wash your hands often with soap. You might sing happy birthday while you wash your hands. It'll be a good enough time for your hands to be sufficiently clean. Or you can use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Another really good way is to keep your hands off your face and to stop touching your face. Don't put your fingers in your mouths or anything like that, just to make sure that you don't spread germs that might be on your hands and then into your mouth. You want to maintain social distancing. So with COVID-19 being aerosolized or being able to be spread through the air, a really good way to avoid catching the disease is maintaining a six feet um, distance apart from people. Um, and you want to have proper cough and sneeze etiquette, so you don't want to be coughing and sneezing directly into your hands. You want to be in your elbow and try to cover it in some way. And supportive care. So they, people who have COVID-19 need to have supportive care to help relieve their symptoms.
so the medical management for um, the two um, diseases are a little different. So for influenza, um, prevention is the most effective management strategy for influenza. So that's why we try and encourage everyone to get vaccinated seasonally every year. Um, and if you happen to catch it, you can have antivirals. Um, for coronavirus, um, we're still trying to understand the best way to manage this disease. Um, so there's no specific antiviral medication yet. Um, and the vaccines are still being in development currently. That is okay. So say you do get sick with the flu or the coronavirus. The thing is with both of these illnesses is that they're both viral, they're both, um, they're both uh, viruses that affect your respiratory system. So the symptoms, as you saw earlier, are very similar. And you can treat these symptoms in similar ways. For instance, getting plenty of rest. This is so important because it helps your immune system fight the virus. Drinking plenty of fluids is great because it'll mobilize any mucus you have in your respiratory system. Get it out. Acetaminophen or ibuprofen are both great for reducing your fever, any pain you get with the sickness. If you take ibuprofen, just make sure to eat it on a full stomach because it can cause GI issues. Using over-the-counter drugs like Mucinex is great to also mobilize. <clears throat> Looks like I need it. <laughs> It's also good to mobilize that mucus and get it out. You don't want to sting in there. That can cause an infection. Also using humidified air, you want to keep that respiratory system moist so it can also, again, mobilize secretions and it makes it easier for your body to fight it off. And using lozenges like halls, that's great for a sore throat, one of the symptoms that you may develop with these illnesses. When to call a doctor. I'm going to go over when to call a doctor and when to seek emergency care. It's important to know the difference between these two. Could be the difference in saving your life. And when to call the doctor. This is important because with these symptoms that I'm going to say, you, they may need to assess you. It could be something else that's not the flu. They may not test you. And if they bring you in to test you, they could tell the difference of how to treat you. Some things when they call a doctor, shortness of breath or wheezing, any mildness of that, you may call a doctor, but if it gets really bad, you want to go into the emergency department. A new or worsening cough, any different colored mucus, that could be a sign of infection. You want to get that checked out. Any ear pain, sore throat, or sinus pain, that could be a sinus infection or infection or laryngitis. You also want to get that checked out because there's different ways to treat that as well. A temperature over 102, that can be really dangerous for your body when it goes over 102 degrees. You're gonna want different ways to manage that. And your doctor can help you with that as well. And vomiting. Vomiting can cause dehydration and electrolyte imbalances that can affect your health in different ways. So you're also gonna to wanna to call the doctor if you have a lot of vomiting. Next slide. This is when to seek the emergency care. So again, I said that this affects your respiratory health and you need to breathe to live. It's as simple as that. And with these symptoms, trouble breathing, pain in chest, new confusion, inability to stay awake or blue lips, that means that your body is very compromised and it's breathing and you need to seek emergency care immediately. It's very important. Okay, so this is some information about the flu vaccine, some questions that you may have. So where can you get the vaccine? You can go to your doctor, you can go to your local pharmacy, so CVS, Walgreens, and maybe any flu clinics. I know the town of Windsor, they had a flu clinic a few weeks ago, so you can check the paper, check the news to see where those may be happening. When should you get a flu vaccine? So it's recommended to get a flu vaccine early fall, but right now it's not too late. It's actually a good time to go get one. Why should you get a flu vaccine? So it's for your protection against the flu. A vaccine will greatly reduce your risk of getting the flu. So how does the vaccine work? You are injected and your body makes antibodies, which will provide protection against the infection. And you need a flu shot every year. 
Yes, it is recommended to get a flu shot every year because different strains of the flu are coming out. It's always changing, so you really should get one every single year. Okay, so more information. What are the risks of getting a flu vaccine? Of course, there's risks with everything. So there are minor side effects that you could get, such as pain, redness, swelling at the site of the injection. Sometimes people get sore. I know I always get sore, so it's recommended to get the injection into your non-dominant arm. That always helps me out with my soreness. So also possible to get a fever, headache, and like I said, muscle aches. And there are severe reactions that could occur. They are extremely rare. So we have Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is a rare disorder in which a person's own immune system damages their nerve cells. So like I said, this is extremely rare. And I believe there, and I think we believe there are more benefits than risks to getting the flu shot. So um, information, some information on uh, the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, when will the vaccine become available? So. Hopefully the first doses will be come available by the end of 2020. Um, there are a few companies that are in development of the vaccination currently. Um, none of them have finished their, their trials yet, meaning that they can't start pushing it out to the public for use. Um, and once they are available, initial um, supplies may be a little limited. Um, and that might mean that not everyone can just go out and get a flu, uh, vaccination just like Marissa was explaining that you can with the flu vaccine. However, um, the CDC is hopeful that everyone will be able to go out and get their vaccination for COVID if they would like to, just like um, you can with the flu right now. Um, and where will you be able to get the vaccine once it's available? So again, there's still a lot of unknowns with this um, just because the vaccines are still under development, but they should be available in most places like we already have um, with the flu, so CVS or Target or um, your primary care provider ideally will all be able to give you your vaccination. Um, and where can you find the latest information on this vaccination to keep you up to date? One of the better um, places to find the information is going to be um, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention or the CDC website. Um, they update it weekly. Um, the, I actually got this information on this slide from that website and it was only updated a few days ago. They're going to be updating it as to be as current as they can to try and keep the public up to date um, because getting vaccine, getting a vaccination is going to um, only protect everyone and help us beat this pandemic.